Okay, so <clears throat> hello everyone. Welcome back to the fifth session of the Ross Learning series. In today's session, we are going to simulate robot arms. So let's see how we do that in Ross. Mm -hmm. okay. So quick recap before we go on. We have simulated various different mobile robots. We built a custom mobile robot previously and simulated that as well. Today our focus will be on simulating robot arms and similar to the mobile robots that we have simulated, we discussed that navigation stack is an important ROS package for simulating mobile robots. We use that navigation stack in the TurtleBot 3 robot where three components were mostly important which were localization, mapping and navigation. In today's session to simulate the robot arms, the package move it. MOVE IT is important to simulate the robot arms to perform all the different functions that a robot arm needs to perform. So let's again consider this robot arm that we had, the dummy robot. Now, to the right over here, I've written some of the um, components of robot arm. These are not all the components. I may have missed some components, but these are mostly the important ones which I could think of. So the first one is forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, robot dynamics, trajectory generation, robot control, collision avoidance and grasp. So move it is able to handle all these and much more than what I have mentioned over here. Let's just briefly go over them one by one so we can understand what these are actually. First are, first are the forward and inverse kinematics in very simple basic terms in the previous session also we discussed that to mathematically represent a robot we need to uh, assign coordinate frames to the joints of the robot arm at each joint we have a coordinate frame fixed uh, to the robot and also at the end effector we have a coordinate frame fixed as well now the mathematical process or algorithm given the different joint angles to convert that to the pose and uh, position and the orientation of the end effector is called forward kinematics. As we can see in the diagram over here as well, if we know the joint angles, whichever they are, then the algorithm that is used to convert this, these joints to the, uh, to the um, coordinate space or the reference frame of the end effector, as we can see over here, RGB, XYZ axis. Pose, uh, position where the robot is in the XYZ space and what is the orientation of the robot like where it is uh, looking and all that process is called forward kinematics and the inverse process of this is called inverse kinematics given the position and the orientation of the robot what are the joint angles of the robot now just a small point about inverse kinematics if if you have studied some mathematics, you may know that there is a certain problem with inverse functions in general. Let's consider that our robot arm is facing in this way. Now the solution for the inverse kinematics can be uh, uh, different arm positions like the robot can also be this way and the robot can also the robot body can also be in down way or it can also be in a right or upward way. So that is the problem with inverse that there are a lot of inverse functions that are used like sine inverse, uh, trigonometric inverse functions and so on. So inverse kinematics is usually taken as an optimization kind of problem where we it have iterative algorithms that optimize over how to get a single joint value answer. Forward kinematics is relatively simple. It's just multiplying the sine trigonometric functions together to get the uh, final robot end effector position. So that's something to keep track of. Inverse kinematics is difficult. Forward kinematics is relatively easier. Okay, so the next part is the robot dynamics. So personally, robot, robot dynamics is a, is a little difficult concept to study and understand. It's all related to force and torques that are being applied on the robot. Since these are forces and torques, uh, it is a little difficult to understand. Mostly robot dynamics, the application of robot dynamics usually comes in robot control, which we are going to discuss ahead as well. So just this much on robot dynamics. 
Next is trajectory generation. Now we want the robot to do some task in the environment that we have. And we want to do that. We want the robot to move around in that environment as well. Now, if we are given, let's say some point of interest that we want the robot to be in, let's say these red points, then a way to, for the robot to move between these points is done by trajectory generation. A robot cannot just automatically start from this point and reach the other point. We need to create some form of a uh, path for the robot that the robot can follow. Usually in uh, this trajectory generation, polynomial mathematics is mostly used because uh, as we can see, we need some form of smooth functions that there is no discontinuity in the functions as such. So the robot can smoothly move through the path that we have. That's why mostly polynomials are mostly used in this trajectory generation part. Now, one thing to note that these, um, the trajectory or the path that we have generated for the robot to follow, there's a slight connection you would be able to see with, with the inverse kinematics. Like uh, in the trajectory that we have generated, it's just a collection of points that we have. So these points, once we know these points, we can use inverse kinematics to get the joint angles and we can move the robot accordingly, like what joint angle should be next and so on. So there is a slight progression. You can see that how we can imply inverse kinematics to the trajectory generation part as well. Next is the control. Now control systems are a very broad topic in engineering. They are applied to almost every field of engineering. You can see mechanical, electrical, chemical, aerospace, almost everywhere. And even in robotics, the main idea of a controller is like, what is in terms of robotics, we can say like, where is the robot currently, where we want the robot to go and how much distance or how much parameter is left for the robot to cover. This all is handled by a controller part of the robot. <clears throat> like previously, we uh, in the trajectory generation, if we have these small discrete points, then control algorithms will be used to actually move the robot to some point as such. Now control algorithms use, uh, usually optimize over to reduce the, uh, to get an optimal path so that the robot does not give oscillations while moving and so on. Like the energy consumption is also low. These kind of systems are created by the control systems as such. Okay. Next is collision avoidance. Now collision avoidance is once again, an, uh, almost applicable to all parts of robotics. Even in mobile robots, we need to do collision avoidance so that we do not collide with the environment. Even in robot arms, we need to do this. One, another, like for robot arms, we can consider there are two kinds of collisions. First is the external collision and second is the internal. External is simply something that is present in the environment that the robot has to avoid. Internal collisions is that the robots does not collide with itself. That also has to be taken care of while these robot uh, arm algorithms are planned. So that is one. Yeah. So collision avoidance is also important that we need to take care of while we are using or programming a robot arm. Next are grasps. Grasps is simply picking or holding the object wherever it is present. So robot arms are also called robot manipulators manipulators because they are able to manipulate the objects that are present in the environment to manipulate the objects. We need to hold them. So holding is such an important part in robot arms as well. There are a lot of things that we need to optimize while we are holding a thing, how much force we need to apply to hold the object. Uh, what should be the action that we are performing just before holding? What is the action we have to perform just after holding? All these things are taken care of in the grasps component of the robot arms. It's like a research area in its own, how to grasp different objects and so on. So that is another important component as well. Okay. So today, uh, this, this much is what we had to discuss for the theory part. Now we will go on to the demo. So if you have any questions, you can ask regarding the robot arms. Okay, so no questions for now. Let's move to the demo then. 
so the first step to um, start with the demo is to install the ROS package that I just mentioned, which is move it. So it's going to be pretty simple. If you have been following the tutorials, we just need to type in sudo apt-get install ROS no etic move it. I have already installed it, so I won't be running the command again. So this is the command to install the ROS no etic move it. Okay. Next thing, we need to clone some packages that we are going to use in this tutorial. So first we will go to desktop that in workspace that we already had into the SRC directory. Once again, I have already cloned the uh, repositories that are required. First is the move it tutorials.git and second is the panda move it config.git. So I have uh, cloned them over here, panda move it config and the move it tutorials. Rest of the repositories will be installed as we go on along the tutorial. I'll explain what is going to happen when we uh, run this. Okay, now when we have this, uh, all these packages over here, and after that, if we type catkin make, an error is going to come, which would be uh, this over here, that the uh, raw system could not find a package configuration file provided by Arvis visual tools. What this simply means is that there is another package that goes by the name of ROS Noetic Arvis visual tools that we needed to install in order to build this, these packages. We will simply type the command sudo apt-get install rosnoetic arvis visual tools. Once again, if we run the catkin make, we would get another error saying move it visual tools is not installed and we're going to install that as well. Rosnoetic move it visual tools. After resolving all the errors, it would uh, be clear that we need to catkin make again, but there is another error that will come that is uh, make minus j8 minus l8 failed. What this means is that when now this error will, would be different for different users over here because all of us have different system configurations of our computer. My laptop that I'm using has four cores in it. So yeah, we, I have four cores. Your computer may have six or even eight cores or some pe uh, people's computer may also have two cores. Depending on that, this error may occur. What this error means that the catkin make command is not able to process all the different um, uh, operations that it needs to do. And it is overloading all the processes that we have. So to fix this error, if this error arises, then you need to type this command catkin make minus J4. Like for my system, this since I have four cores, this means there will be eight threads multiplied by two. If you have six cores, then your cores will be uh, 6 times 2, 12. What you need to do is just reduce some cores and type that number over here, minus J4. Now this catkin make command will utilize less CPU and it will not fail while building the packages. This error may occur on your system or it may not occur on your system. So just keep that in mind that this can happen as well. Right. Now, now the um, instructions that we will be following will be from the ROS move it package itself. As we can, as we know that there are different ROS packages and all, most of the packages that we have, have their own tutorials, which we can follow. So to get the move it ones, we're simply going to Google ROS noetic move it. And we will get this first, um, first link, which we can use. So this is a complete set of, so this is a complete set of tutorials like we can follow it end to end, but it should be only followed when we need to use a particular thing because there are a lot of things that we can um, learn from here. First is the getting started, move it, quick start in Arvis. One thing I would like to point out is that in their getting started and how they have the installation instructions that this tutorial has given is not that good. That's why I have given uh, this installation instructions, sudo apt get install rosnoetic move it because these are simpler. Otherwise, in their getting started, they have given a quite big instructions, which are kind of difficult to follow. So you can just sudo apt get installed to get it done. The main tutorial that we're going to follow in this session is the move it quick start in Arvis. So, okay, I'll just zoom in. Okay, so as we move down, uh, what they say now, 
we have already installed both these repositories over here movie tutorials and panda movie config these both of these are required to run the tutorials that they have given in their complete tutorial sections so the first command that it say to run is ros launch panda move it config demo dot launch always true so we need to run this okay now on my system i it's actually running but in your system once again you would receive an error that says that resource not found franka underscore description how to fix this error now i have uh, in the slides i have mentioned how you would google everything and all like if you google this com uh, error directly you would get these results and what the results would say that the franka description package also needs to be installed on your src or catkin workspace so our mission becomes now to install this now this is again available on github the link is uh, github.com Slash Franca I mean, under uh, slash Franca Ross. It's just also written over here, like GitHub.com slash this uh, complete thing that is written over here. Then we need to clone this. And one thing after we clone, we uh, if we, when we clone it, we need to go inside that Ross package and delete every other folder that we have except this Franca description. Only only the Franca description part will remain. If we can see it over here, I will go to Franca Ross. Now over here, they are going to install a lot of pack, uh, folders like Franca Control, Franca Description, Franca Example Controllers, and so on. We only need to keep the Franca Description folder. Otherwise, the building process will give another set of errors and so on. We only need to keep this Franca Description folder over here. Rest uh, remains the same. So after we do that, then 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 we need to run the catkin make command, and after that we are ready to launch the actual command that they have given. Okay, so uh, let's do the catkin make over here if this allows us. This won't take much time because I have already run it as well. So I have run the command, and now I'm going to source the repository. After that, we are going to launch the move um, the command that they had given. I have listed all the different steps that you would have to go through in the slides. So you can carefully follow them, and if you get any error, you can ask as well. Okay, so we have this running now. Now over in the add, uh, over in the bottom left, we are going to click the add button, and we are going to add this motion planning uh, uh, plugin. Yeah, plugin or tool, we can say. so here we have the robot arm now we have simulated this robot arm what all these uh, markers over here represent this blue bubble is simply the a way to position the robot where we want the robot to be if we uh, drag it then the robot will keep on following that this orange colored visualization will follow the actual robot is currently sitting over here it's not moving right now we will move it after we set the goal position of the robot so we can uh, move the this blue sphere to move the robot and then we can also drag these rings that we can see over here to rotate the robot as well in the different axis like the red is about x axis green is about y axis and blue is about the z axis rgb xyz that's the convention and even these arrows that we can see if we instead want to move uh, using these arrows then that is also a case that we can drag these arrows to move the robot in just straight lines in, according to the different axis okay so now let's say that we want our goal position to be this and we want our robot to move over there in this uh, bottom left part over here we are going to see the plan uh, three buttons mainly plan execute and plan and execute 
plan is simply going to plan a path how the robot is going to move execute is only going to execute the path plan and execute is going to do them simultaneously one by one now execute button is not available at the start because the robot has not planned a path yet so first let's plan a path by clicking the plan button now uh, i'm not sure if this will be visible over here but a simple visualization of the robot is also can be seen like how the robot is moving and after it has planned we can click the execute button to actually move the robot to that position now since i am using google meet and a lot of different applications are running so it may be a bit slow but on your computer it will just run pretty smooth compared to this okay so now let's say we want to move our robot over here and we click the plan and execute button now this is going to one by one first plan and then execute the command as well as we can see okay so this is pretty much clear uh, these commands you can follow and um, in the social media post that you would create the a video of this would be quite good to watch when you have done that okay so this is how we uh, have a simple way to use the move it package we do not we just install we got a default robot arm that we can use and we did motion planning on this robot arm we can also get other robot arms as well except the default one but we have to change some settings and that is left to you for you to explore how we can do that after step 1 you can also go on with step 2 3 and 4 they have give uh, told us uh, they have explained other different features as well of what is it like how the robot would be if it moves into collision uh, what are the different types like if we want to move the uh, joints in such a way that the end effector is fixed and so on they have told everything how to do that you can follow this and see how different things come out okay now apart from this i would also like to cover the um, running the c++ files as well now we are going to run a c++ file that is related to this robot arm uh, path planning that we can see now the explanation for this is going to be a little bit um difficult to understand because i will just explain the code in just a really brief way if you want to explore more and learn about it then i would recommend that you read this move group c++ interface move it commander scripting and this uh, pick and place tutorial as well this would help you to understand like how the code is working and so on i'll just explain it in a high level so that we can understand how to create c++ files in uh, ros that's the main objective okay to create that uh, what you have to do is um, you may need to create a new ros package and the command that i think we discussed before as well it is uh, Okay, what was the command? Cat can create package. Ah, uh, okay. First, we would go to the src directory, and then we can type this command: cat can create package, and whatever package name that we want. I have kept it a uh, pick place tutorial, as we can see. And then, after creating this uh, new ROS package, we are going to cd inside it and create a new directory called src. I have listed all the steps over here in the slides as well. That we first create a package, move inside it, create an src directory, and we create a file that goes by the name pickplace.cpp. You can create any file name. I have just kept it pickplace.cpp to just naming conventions. okay now let's have a quick look at the code okay so the first thing is we import the different libraries that we have this is also what we do in python as well that we include the other um, libraries so the first uh, thing that we have to do in the rvis visualization window what we can do we can also create 
tables and other boxes or objects as well to see how the robot will be planning the path in presence of that as well now to do pick and place we would require for our example two tables one let's say placed uh, horizontally and the other one placed vertically over yeah over here the object is placed on one of the table in front of the robot and our task is to move this object from this table to the other table for that the first thing that we have done is create a uh, function by the name of add collision objects this is the function that is going to add objects in the rvis visualization window now first we create the environment that we want three objects that we have therefore we have this vector of size or array we can say in very simple terms array of size 3 then we add the table object using the different dimensions that we are giving over here and its orientation as well similarly we add the second table over here under this heading and then we also add the object that we want to manipulate over here and finally we are adding all the collision objects using this uh, api move it api that they have given okay so the next step is once we have created an environment we have wrote the create an environment function then we need to prepare the gripper messages this is just telling these are functions telling how to open the gripper and how to close the gripper and we have written all the commands in these two functions the void open gripper to open to tell the robot to open the gripper and the close gripper to tell the robot how to close the gripper we are just giving it commands to close and open it that's it okay now then we have two pipelines first is the pick pipeline now as also i mentioned in the start of the session as well that while grasping there are a lot of things to take care of what is going to happen just before picking what is going to happen just after the picking now the robot can pick the object either going through horizontally or at an angle to the object we need to adjust these things as well also while placing an object the robot can place it and then when it places it it can either move away horizontally or it can either move away at an angle so there are a lot of different settings that we need to adjust while we are picking an object or while we are placing that object so this function pick over here defines all the tasks that we need to do while uh, picking we first need to set the pre grasp approach like where uh, from where it should come for from what distance it should come and so on and after picking what it should do like just after picking should it move up or should it move back or where should, where it should move we have defined everything in this function and finally we have used the api to tell now you can pick we has adjusted all the settings you can pick the object according to these settings the same goes for the place pipeline as well like after uh, just before placing how it should approach the other table and just after placing it how it should go back either horizontally vertically or at an angle we are setting every every setting over here and then we are telling the robot to just uh, execute the command now once we have created all these functions then we have created a main function this is uh, if you have studied c programming then main function is the one that actually runs the other functions we have defined are just going to be called by this function in the main function we have initialized a ros node that is by the name pick place and then we are calling all the different functions that we created like add collision objects pick place and other functions as well like how much sleep duration or how much wait should the robot do before executing the other command and then we uh, and then there is just um, the closing loop like how the ros node should close so this is the complete uh, code that we have more description on this code is available on this pick and place tutorial as well you can have a look at it they have described all the different things that we need to set while doing the grasp like as we can see over here okay so this is done and we have the code next thing that we need to do as i discussed before as well that while writing c++ files we need to make changes to cmake list.txt and package.xml as well now let's see what are the changes to them one by one and also i have described all the changes in the slides you can just copy from here as well 
also i'm going to upload this code on github also you can have a look there as well now at the start everything looks just the same that we have the name description and so on but as we move down we can see we have added these lines like build depend exec depend these are just uh, libraries that this code is depending on to run like gazebo ross move it commander move it code different move it apis that the robot needs to have in order to run this code so that is all is described in this part of the package.xml it's just a simple change over here and in the cmake list.txt we have defined what where to find the different packages to compile the uh, c++ file we are finding package like move it core move it ross planning and so on and we're also finding some other external packages that are not available inside ross like eigen3 boost and so on and towards the end we are also specifying what we need to actually build the code like add executable pick place src slash pick place dot cpp we are telling cmake list dot txt like what needs to be built as well and then target link libraries and installing where it should install and so on these are just standard things all we need to do is uh, if we have a different file name then we just need to change the file name over here that's it not much changes as such so after this is done now when we run the cat can make then it's going to create the uh, cpp file and then we can run it while we are running the tutorial over there so let's do that uh, i have already cat can make towards the start so i'll just cross launch the demo that we have once again Uh, once again, uh, the visualization over here may be slow and it may be possible that you would not be able to um, freely see what is going on. So you can run this on your computer to see that as well. So now we have this uh, uh, robot running over here. Then we're going to open a new tab and we are going to source the workspace. And then we are going to type the command ROS run pick place tutorial and we add only a single file pick place. That's it. Now, since we have built this file, this will be available as a command to run. We are going to run this and see what happens in the RWIS window. I'll just move the terminal over here. Okay. So we can see that there are two tables now. Now the robot is going to uh, plan how to pick the uh, object rectangular object over here. It's going to pick it and place it on the other table. So this is the complete code that we wrote and how the robot performed according to the code. You can, in your social media post, you can post a video of this as well. Okay, so this is now complete. And also this is all I had to discuss for this session as well, mostly. If you want to read more about it, I've told you can read the other tutorials as well. Now, as move it is a quite a large package. So you do not need to just go through the tutorials and see like just in one go, that is not the thing that you would do while learning this. You, ju you should have a project in mind that you want to do this and then go on to read the tutorials. That will be a more efficient way to learn how to use this move it and ROS, uh, move it pa ROS package. As always, uh, whatever code that you would write for this uh, related corresponding to this session, you would have you would upload it to GitHub and you can link the repo in your post as well that you would create on social media and post it over there. So this is it that we had for this session. It was relatively shorter session since not a lot of things to discuss in the next session, which will also be the last session. We will discuss ROS2 like what are the differences what are the difference in commands and so on as such so if you have any questions related to this session or any previous one you can ask otherwise the session is done
okay so chinta asks what are the hardware components of robotic arm if okay so there are a lot of different hardware components that we can have the most mm -hmm. so uh, as we discussed before as well that a robot any robot consists of mainly two things which are links and joints now the joints of robot arm are composed of motors now these motors in itself can be really complex like they can be simple motors that we can see or they can have different sensors as well like temperature sensor motion sensor uh, angle based uh, measurement sensor and so on so a motor in itself can have a lot of different hardware components then we have the robot body like the connecting parts they they can be any uh, there can be any number of components as such or they can be made of any material also and towards the end we also need an end effector or a gripper kind of thing to hold the things as well so that also counts as an uh, hardware component as such other than this there can also be a controller kind of thing for the robot arm like uh, that we can connect with our uh, computer and so on so mostly i think these are the different components that would be required to build a robot arm yes the process you can count the processor as like we can say that it's a computer itself like the computer itself is processing all the information and telling the motors what to do so that also counts as a hardware as well yes processor can also count as a hardware your laptop has your own can also be but these are the main things motors are the most important motors and the things that join these motors they are like important ones so dibya sankhas how can we learn about ros node syntax for c++ okay uh, for that you can refer to these tutorials like ros cpp nodes yeah for this you like okay now when we want to create simple uh, files like these publisher subscriber and so on then you can mostly refer to this ros wiki as such they are going to tell about how to create a simple uh, files like we have ros init and init is going to initialize a node publisher is going to create a publisher and then we have this ros loop and so on so these are going to describe the basic uh, syntax of for how to write code in c++ to get it a more complex things we need to refer to the like the movit tutorials they are going to tell how to specifically how to use the movit api for c++ like like over here move group c++ interface they are going to specifically tell like uh, what should be the code to access the movit part of the ros over here so it's mostly tutorials there i don't i have not seen any such uh, videos as such related to it mostly it is tutorials that are present on the internet that you can read about so that's where you should learn about c++ and it's also more about practice as you practice and read more code you will understand better how to write the code as such a robot software engineer should know everything like robot kinematics dynamics directed and sector and what are the requirements to be a software engineer they do not necessarily need to know uh, yes they do not necessarily need to know they just need to know the basic idea of what happens the software engineer will be responsible for only a particular or specific thing that they are building like a robotics engineer can be working on motion planning algorithms so they do not mostly need to know about the other things just a basic idea main focus would be on different motion planning algorithms trajectory generation algorithms and so on and mostly this robot kinematics and so on these are mostly done by libraries as such and there is not much uh, development that is done over here and if they need they then we can read about the specific components when we are about to write the code for this like when we are right to about to write the code for robot kinematics then it's very simple we can read what is how to do that and we can implement it just a thing that robot kinematics is mostly matrix multiplications and so on nothing much fancy about that and some optimization procedures for inverse kinematics so just a basic idea about everything but the main uh, 
specific knowledge about the thing that you are working on that's what is required just a basic idea about all the things also a robot software engineer should know how to use ros or should be able to use a system similar to ros that is a one requirement that he should have Okay, so no. Okay, it will be also going to simulate quadruped. Will it happen in next lecture? Um, yes. So this was a plan that I thought of that will going to simulate a quadruped. But what I have seen, I could not find any specific things related to quadruped uh, that I can tell about. Like there are no ROS packages that we can use to create quadrupeds. Oh, okay. Quad. Okay, okay. I'll just. Uh, tell about the ROS package that is related to building a quadruped. You can check that out, but I won't be covering it in this session series. Next, we are going to only cover ROS2. Now, the ROS package that is used to build quadrupeds is CHAMP. C-H-A-M-P. This is very similar to the navigation stack and the move it, st uh, move it ROS package that we saw today. It is used to build the quadruped robots. Like they have already written the controllers that are required to run the quadruped and so on. We all we need to do is select the quadruped that we want to simulate. Like, do we want to simulate? Uh, there are more simulations other than the photos over here, which we want to simulate. And then we can select our environment that we want to run in and we can do motion planning like we saw in the turtle bot three as well. Like over here, we can simply uh, navigation part is uh, very similar to how we do that in the mobile robots as well. We simply give the command and the uh, quadruped robot would start following it. All of the instructions are given in this GitHub repository. One thing that you would need to note is that this ROS package runs on ROS Melodic. ROS Melodic was the previous version of ROS Noetic. So you cannot run this package on ROS Noetic. You have to use ROS Melodic to run that. And to run ROS Melodic, you can use the similar commands that we have discussed before. Like we are running ROS Noetic, you can install a Docker uh, file for the ROS Melodic as well. And you can run these this ROS package on ROS Melodic. So you can, uh, if you want to explore Quadruped, then this is the ROS package that you should look for. Champ, C-H-A-M-P. So where I can learn integrating ROS with AI. Um, once you have, once you know how to write the code for different things, like we did as well, like in the turtle bot three, uh, like in the turtle bot, uh, in the turtle bot three session, after the turtle bot three session, we had the ROS components discussion session. In that we simulated the turtle bot three, like the turtle bot three was moving forward, avoiding obstacles and so on. Once you reach to that stage, once you know how to write code for your robot, then you are simply integrating ROS with an AI. Like in that session, we were integrating AI like a obstacle avoidance mechanism. If you want to integrate ROS with, let's say, TensorFlow to run machine learning applications, that is also just writing Python files or C++ files. All ROS will do is tell you about the different sensor values and everything that is coming. You, you can process it in any way possible. You can either use TensorFlow, neural networks, any form of AI, and you can output that to anything as such. So that's how you would integrate ROS with AI. Okay, so Isha says that a robot arm has very heavy motors with a single raspberry that has move it code will be able to handle that whole robot arm. 
ओके हम एक्चुअली व्हाट द थिंग इज ओके इन वेरी सिंपल टर्म्स आई वुड से दैट द मोटर और द हैवी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कंपोनेंट these are separated and the low electronics components like raspberry pi they are separated the power for the heavy motors comes from a separate system only the controlling thing comes from the raspberry pi or any other processor that you would be using like your laptop they are, they only provide a signal to the robot motors like how much they should move but the actual power comes from a different system altogether so the heavy motors they do not have to depend on power for the uh, depend on depend on the syst- uh, computer sy- okay got your point they do not need to depend on computer systems for the power they only tell the signal how much they should move and they move it and so on okay so there are no other questions so we will stop recording for the session and we are done for the session today so